Welcome back to Auto Mundial, the weekly home of all the latest motoring news and reviews. This week, Porsche presents a new and refreshed Taycan, featuring longer range and even more power. We've also got a unique Ford Bronco with rugged looks and a rather heroic purpose, but can it handle the heat? Plus a battle of the premium compacts as the newly facelifted Audi A3 challenges the A-Class from Mercedes. That is all coming up. First though, the news. In a shock statement earlier this month, Toyota and Nissan announced they could form an EV development partnership in the aim of reducing R&D costs. The pair of Japanese brands mentioned in a joint release that they're in the talking stages, having signed memorandum of understanding as they begin to explore how such a partnership would benefit. According to the statement, collaboration would firstly focus on developing and procuring EV parts and software together, saving each manufacturer money, but joint research and development would also help expand the Japanese giant's EV offerings. The news comes at a time when car makers from China, like BYD, as well as up-and-coming makes like Tesla, are claiming a hold on the EV market. Meanwhile, Honda and Nissan have but a handful of fully electric vehicles in their ranges. Honda offers the ENY1 in Europe, whilst Nissan's only zero-emission models are the Leaf and Araya. With governments pushing manufacturers towards full EV ranges by 2035, those car makers not currently pushing to that goal are certainly on the back foot. Toyota and Nissan will certainly hope they can reclaim the lost time. The Duke is a staple of the Nissan lineup, and now, five years after the introduction of its second generation, Compact crossover has received a facelift. Fans of the car's quirky styling will be pleased to know that the design has remained untouched. But that unique look will get an extra pop of colour thanks to the addition of a new yellow paint option. In fact, headlining elements of this year's changes include this new shade as well as the new N Sport trim level. Featuring black details across the roof, A and B pillars, wheel arches, door mirrors and wheels, bright colours are sure to go well with the contrasting parts. Inside is where the Duke's midlife redesign really is a refresh. Matching the new exterior colour, end sport trim cars get yellow boomerang details across the dashboard and yellow stitching and Alcantara inserts to the seats. All variants of the car benefit from the new 12.3-inch touchscreen with wireless CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. Powertrains in the new Duke remain unchanged, with two options available, a hybrid and a non-hybrid. The 1.0-litre three-cylinder petrol gets 112 brake horsepower and offers around 39 mpg, whilst the hybrid model gets 141 horsepower and 10 miles per gallon boost over its entry-level unit. The new Duke is available now, with prices starting from just under £23,500. Offering practicality, reliability and affordability, the five-door hatchback has always been a popular body shape. But with the first A3 nearly 30 years ago, Audi introduced a new segment, the Premium Compact Class. Today, it is one of the best-selling cars in the UK. Now, with a midlife update four years into its fourth generation, Audi's hoping to continue that trend. For a facelift, we struggle to spot all the exterior updates, with there being so few. But in general, larger side air intakes and a slight grille redesign make up most of the tweaks, helping to clean up and simplify the look. In addition to these minor touch-ups, Audi will let owners choose from four different daytime running light patterns from the infotainment screen. So if that's the one feature you're looking for in a car, it's good news. Inside the cabin, it's now far sleeker than the outgoing design. The centre console gets a clean black finish around the gear selector and a cool blade sweeps across the dash. 
The whole cabin gets nice mood lighting, while the round air vents synonymous with Audi disappear in favour of thin rectangular ducts. The 10.1-inch touchscreen, sitting pretty much in the middle of the dashboard, is connected to Audi's new App Store. Among other uses, this is where owners of new Audi cars can sign up to various optional extras for a subscription fee. And Audi is seemingly now steaming ahead with the idea. Under the bonnet, there's very little change to the A3, with still just two engine options available. There's a 35 TFSI, a 1.5-litre mild hybrid petrol, producing 148 bhp, while the 35 TDI badge represents a 2-litre diesel. Only a 7-speed S-Tronic automatic gearbox is available as of now, but a 6-speed manual is on its way. So too is a plug-in hybrid, expected later this year. Order books for Audi's updated A3 open in April and, much like the original Mark IV, is available in two body styles, the traditional Sportback or the Saloon. Audi is not the only manufacturer to offer a saloon version of an originally hatchback model as Mercedes joins the premium compact class fun with its A-Class. Funnily enough, it too received a midlife facelift just over a year ago for 2023. Much like the new car from the Four Rings, this star-fronted hatch received few noticeable changes outside from its upgrade. Why change a winning team? But the changes did not manage to eliminate what could be seen as a cluttered interior. Whilst the continuous screen combining the 10.25-inch infotainment touchscreen and 7-inch instrument display is a high-end touch, the rest of the car's loud chrome accents appear almost gaudy. In our eyes, a better looking car from the inside. The Audi also offers a smidge more practicality than its Merc rival. 10 litres of extra boot space, which might not sound like a lot, but the 380 litres in the Sportback also feature a lower lip, aiding in loading and unloading. With the rear seats folded, the Audi gets a commendable 1200 litres of storage up there among the best in class. The A3 also uses the same platform as the Volkswagen Golf, so a five-star Euro NCAP safety score as well as a pair of Isofix points make this a brilliant family car. As yet, Audi has not announced pricing for the new A3, but the previous iteration of the car saw 35 TFSI and TDI models start at the £28,000 mark. Meanwhile, the Mercedes name manages to inflate its entrance starting price to just over £30,000. the break, Ford shows off its latest rugged variant of the Bronco. Welcome back. Coming up, we take a look at the all-new Porsche Taycan, but first a fiery trip to the American wilderness. Following 25 years as a model name forgotten to the past, the Ford Bronco made its resurgence in 2021 with its sixth generation. Since then, it's become popular as a compact SUV across the United States and has proven itself a capable off-roader. The famous name is even beginning to make its way to different markets, China being the most recent as early as January this year. The new shaped Bronco is clearly a top choice for those looking to tackle the unbeaten track, which is surely why Ford thought it made such a capable addition to firefighting fleets. This is the Ford Bronco Wildland Firefighting Command Rig, a fully kitted out version of the SUV, ready to assist in putting out wildfires. It does so thanks to a bunch of modifications focusing on adding advanced communication gear, including radios, satellite and antenna connectors, as well as a drone with a live view to spot potential dangers. Unique modifications are not restricted to the interior, however, 
as this particular Bronco bears a rugged look. The truck gets a robust grille guard, factory fitted winch, a roof rack with emergency and search lights as well as a siren. Oh, and these nice chunky tires, perfect for covering all kinds of terrain. Under the flamboyant firefighting frock, this Bronco is a Badlands edition featuring the off-road focused Sasquatch package. It gets the advanced 4x4 system and electronically locking differentials on both axles, helping the car get to even the most remote locations. The Wildland Firefighting Command Rig was donated to the National Park Service as part of Ford's own initiative to preserve wildlands, the Bronco Wild Fund. This kitted out off-roader will serve firefighters in the 33,000 acres of Bandelier National Monument in New Mexico as a command center, helping to relay communication between teams. Unfortunately, just one example exists, and it will remain in the wilderness, but it does show just how capable the Bronco really is. And if you fancy getting your hands on a beefed up off-road ready Bronco, Ford has you covered with the Badlands Edition. From one rugged off-road capable SUV to another much larger one. The 2024 Korean manufacturer Hyundai decided to overhaul its popular Santa Fe model, and the result is something the designers can surely be proud of. The new Santa Fe is a far larger model than its predecessor, welcoming not only seven seats but additional suspension travel, allowing it to kick up some dust. An angular shape with interesting styling cues that echo rugged designs from the likes of Land Rover and Jeep, this new look Hyundai is certainly a stunner. From the side, the sloping roofline and illusion of fully surround windows help add style to the larger model, as do the muscular wheel arches. Inside, the first noticeable upgrade from the outgoing Santa Fe is a larger cabin benefiting from an extended wheelbase, so legroom is very much a plenty. A pair of 12.3-inch displays combine into one to form the panoramic screen, akin to many of the cars on the market today. Throughout the interior are a collection of eco-friendly materials according to Hyundai, so surfaces are soft to the touch, enhancing the premium persona Hyundai is trying to display. But it isn't all about luxury and comfort, as this Santa Fe is supposed to be a rugged SUV, looking up to the Jeeps and Defenders of the world. Storage bins throughout the cabin will ensure your journeys off the beaten track are not without essentials like food, water and phones. Speaking of storage, the third row of seats does encroach on boot space, but lay it flat and there is ample room for any adventure gear. Powering the majority of the new Santa Fe models is a 2.5-litre turbocharged four-cylinder, good for 277 brake horsepower and 311 foot-pounds of torque. However, those looking for better gas mileage can go for the 1.6-litre four-pot that comes with hybrid assistance combining to a lower 232 brake horsepower, though it does get about 10 mpg more than the non-hybrid with 37 mpg at motorway speeds. However, for a hybridized power unit, we struggle to be impressed by this figure, even accepting the Santa Fe's bulk. Another large seven-seat off-road capable SUV is the Ford Explorer, which, despite not getting a hybrid powertrain at this time, can manage around 32 miles per gallon in all-wheel drive guys. Once more, the Ford manages this competitive fuel economy figure while pumping 300 bhp from its 2.3-litre EcoBoost four-cylinder engine. Top-of-the-range models such as the ST-badged Explorer will reach the dizzying heights of 400 hp from a twin-turbo V6. Design-wise, the Ford is far less revolutionary, with a cabin much resembling any other standard Ford product. Room in the back is just as practical as the Hyundai, offering over 450 litres of boot space with the rear seats up. In the UK, we don't get the combustion Ford Explorer, instead receiving the all-electric version, sporting tweaked styling and just two rows of seats. But starting at an expected £40,000 when it hits the market this summer, it should prove to be a good EV alternative to the combustion-powered Hyundai. 
Back to the States, however, and the Santa Fe is available from $34,000, a few quid more than the outgoing car, but the extra space and opulence no doubt explain that increase. The hybrid version demands a $3,000 premium for the added fuel economy. Ford's combustion-powered Explorer, meanwhile, is in the same ballpark, starting at $38,500. Since the 918 Spider launched in 2013, Porsche has been at the forefront of the move towards electrification. Not long after its holy trinity rivaling hypercar, the German manufacturer gave us this, the Taycan. A fully electric saloon with supercar performance, this was the brand's first foray into the EV world. And it's fair to say that up against lumbering Teslas and crossovers, it's Porsche handling impressed. But now some five years old, the original Taycan's battery tech is getting a bit tired. Luckily, there's a new Taycan, although from the looks alone, it would be very tricky to tell the new from the old. In short, both the front and rear lights have been slightly redesigned, creating a cleaner line. This is particularly noticeable at the front end, where the LEDs appear flatter than on the previous iteration. The changes feature on a selection of three body styles, the standard saloon, the sport Turismo Estate, and the new higher riding cross Turismo. Inside, it is very much the same story with subtle tweaks to the display layout, with a cleaner look instrument cluster and supposedly optimized infotainment. The biggest change of note, however, come to the options list with a new leather-free specification interior trim. It's under the surface that the facelift Taycan really shows its worth thanks to a fresh battery technology and greater performance. As with this previous car, two battery sizes are available with the Taycan, but it's the larger performance battery plus option that will entice most buyers. Capacity grows from 93 kilowatt hours to 105, and fast charging will allow powering from 10% battery to 80% in an astonishing 18 minutes. Just like the outgoing model, the new Taycan gets four base powertrains. The standard rear-wheel drive Taycan boasts a 420 mile range and a 26 horsepower gain to 429 bhp. The range topping Turbo S, however, puts a mind-boggling 938 brake to the floor, sending it to 62 from a standstill in 2.3 seconds thanks to its all-wheel drive system. But Porsche isn't the only German car maker combining super saloons with electric torque. Audi was also among the first mainstream manufacturers to adopt battery tech with its e-tron GT. Using the same J1 platform as the Porsche Taycan, two versions of the Audi are currently available, the standard car and a sportier RS model. A 93 kilowatt hour battery powering a pair of motors in the RS e-tron GT provide it with around 590 brake horsepower, enough to rival the mid-range Taycan 4S. It will go from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 3.3 seconds and go on to an impressive for an EV 155. Range, however, does suffer as about 300 miles is the most you can expect in a single charge. Styling-wise, the Audi is certainly more fun than the Porsche with its aggressive stance, sharp angles and recognisable fascia. The same goes for the cabin, where the Audi gets a more purposeful design language than the soft Porsche. Less screen-dependent and perhaps more traditional inside, the e-tron GT appears to be a nice place to be on long journeys. But left unchanged since 2021, the Audi e-tron GT is beginning to feel its age. Fear not, however, reports suggest that testing is well underway for a facelift, bringing up-to-date tech and, with it, improved performance. The RS model is reportedly looking at a power figure of well over 700 bhp. But the new Audi will have its work cut out especially following the most recent addition to the Taycan fleet. 
Alongside the standard selection of powertrains, Porsche has sent its all-electric model to the GT department. Yes, the team that gave us track-focused monsters like the 911 GT3 RS. Emerging from the workshop in Stuttgart is the Taycan Turbo GT, a 1,092 brake horsepower lap record destroying machine. The new model has already visited Laguna Seca and the Nürburgring, setting production electric vehicle records at both venues. The new Porsche Taycan starts at £86,500, with the higher-end Turbo and Turbo S models going for £134 and £161,000 respectively. Opting for the Sport Turismo or raised Cross Turismo will each add a modest £800 or £1,100. That's all we have time for this week, but do catch us again next time to find out if the all-new Mercedes Super Saloon can excite like an AMG should, despite hybrid power.